Welcome back to Let's Replay Neverwinter Nights 2 original campaign. This is Big Los. And I decided to load back to a previous save to illustrate some of the things that I've been doing. First of all, you might notice that the font is a little bit different. That's because I have loaded a bunch of mods. I went and downloaded them because I thought it would make this campaign a whole lot better. So I got this mod that increases the font size, changes the font, it also does this. Look, when I turn on the inventory screen, it's basically like a character sheet. And you have all of your inventory slots at your disposal right here. I know this is a popular mod to get, so I think I'm one of the last adopters of it. I'm actually quite pleased with it. This actually makes the game more like Storm of Zaheer than the original campaign because the the Storm of Zaheer was a lot closer to what D&D is really supposed to be like even though the limitations for the original campaign are, are that there's really no overland map random encounters and stuff like that like there was in Storm of Zaheer. I really like that. So you have the your your character sheet right here. You might also notice that the portraits are a little bit different. I also downloaded a bunch of portraits, so if I bring up the character sheet, you might notice that Janik's face is a little bit different. That's because I got a mod for faceless on certain characters. So basically, I think all the human player characters got improved faces so they look a lot better. Plus some companions got improved like Bevel got improved and we'll focus on him in a second. But if you double click on the on the picture right here it should bring up a portrait screen right here and look at all these portraits that I got. A ton of them. However I, I think I have about like 500 portraits here I downloaded it. However, I don't think I have one portrait that looks like Janik. Not one. It's crazy. I mean, I went through all of these things looking for one that looks like Janik. Not one of these looks like Janik. Although there are a lot that are females. There's a lot from other races like elves, dwarves, halflings, gnomes. And I think some of these portraits are actually like celebrities. They took celebrity portraits and photoshopped them, I guess, to look fantasy style. They're quite good, actually. And a lot of these are from the original Neverwinter Nights game. Some of these are from Neverwinter Nights 2 that fans have done. Like, if I go down to the bottom here... They have two for Quora. I thought that's pretty cool. So you can pick which one you like. You can do short hair Quora or long hair Quora. But I think this is the actual portrait that is closest to what Quora is supposed to look like. And then you have Xavi right here. I still don't know how to pronounce her name. It's never pronounced in the game. If anybody knows how to pronounce that, let me know. You know, if you've heard it somewhere else, but... I'm just going to go with Javi. Anyways, these are all the portraits that you can get. Not a lot of African looking guys like Janik here. I mean, there are a few here, but none that are bald, though. I mean, there's like a, there's a woman here who's bald who is pretty close but it's a woman so <laughs> it won't work i mean this one's pretty cl this one's pretty close too except he has facial hair so i haven't found any of these portraits that look like Janik. anyways the reason that i came here is that i want to show off the faces of the companions here so we're going to look at bevel real quick because we don't really see him too much after this point in the game Plus, we're going to talk to him because I forgot to talk to him, and we actually have a lot of conversation trees that we can go through. 
So, let's just do it right now. This is a bit too much for me. Amy's dead, the village is in flames, and now here we are in the swamp looking for ruins? I always wanted to be one of those adventurers, like Brunor Battlehammer or Lord Nasher. Well, back when he had adventures. Brunor Battlehammer is one of the protagonists from the Icewind Dale trilogy and the Jurt Stuarden series of novels by Ari Salvatore, in case you didn't know that. With everything that's happened tonight, though, I think my place is here in West Harbor. Adventuring is all fine and glorious, but someone still needs to remain home and care for the families. What about you? Ever thought of leaving here? Becoming an adventurer? So as you can see, the, the font is a lot bigger. It's a lot easier to read. I like that because I wear glasses and, you know, even with glasses, it's kind of hard to read. You know, when I'm not wearing my glasses, it's pretty impossible to read this stuff. So let's say I just want to get out of this backwater village and see the world. West Harbor isn't all that bad. And Georg says the rest of the world isn't all that good. Uh, should we be in some sort of marching order or something? How good are you with that sword? I'm one of the best of the new militiamen. Never saw you training in the militia, though if we had the time, I could teach you a thing or two. Can you do anything else? I... I... can make soup. And use a sling. Even a bow. But, as Georg says, the only thing I'm really good at is swinging my sword and carrying wood. Should be enough for tonight. What do you know of the ruins? As much as the next harbormen, I suppose. I haven't set foot there since Georg Redfell said we should avoid the place a few years back. Everyone knows it's been overrun by lizardlings, and Georg says if we don't bother them, they won't bother us. Do you always do what Georg says? Of course! And you should as well. He watches the village and tries to keep everyone safe. What's in the ruins? I was told that the ruins were empty, even the chambers beneath it. It wouldn't surprise me if the lizardlings have claimed it. Lizardlings can be ter... 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 uh... protective of what's theirs. And I don't think you'll be able to talk things over with them either. This isn't going to be easy. Why is it I don't see much of you in the village? Chores keep me pretty busy. And then there's the militia training. That can't be the only reason. Well, I always try to do what's right by people, and my family. So if I see something wrong, I let people know. But that doesn't always go over well. Then, people tend to take the long way around to avoid you. I guess that makes me something of a shut-in. Still, letting wrongdoings go doesn't do anyone any good. That's how I see it. Let's keep moving. Okay, so I'm gonna take control of Bevel. What's up? So you can see that his face is a little bit different, and he's uh, he's a little bit better looking than he is originally, you know, which is a good thing because he wasn't very good looking at all. I don't think before. You have need of me. And so this is how Janet's going to be looking for the rest of the campaign. A little bit more handsome. A little bit smoother around the edges. So we're going to go inside the swamp ruins, and then. We're going to take a look at this woman here. As you can see, she's a lot more attractive. It's a big difference. That's one of the reasons why I downloaded that mod. So, that's all I wanted to show of this part. So let's go back to where we left off. So let's load the game. And, no, we're going to go back here. Where we left off back in the Weeping Willow Inn after we had cleared out the upstairs area. So, we're up there with Kelgar. We had just looted all of the upstairs rooms of all their treasures. I mean, it wasn't very much. But hey, we're living in a depressed area. People don't really have very much. So, I was able to find a portrait for Kelgar that looks kind of like him, so we're going to pick that first thing. Alright, here we are. Follow me! Oh yeah, another thing. When I pause it, it doesn't say gain to pause here anymore. Which might be a little bit confusing to me, but it, 
it does say paused here, so I guess that's all I really need, I guess. Plus, you don't move. Now, if you unpause it, then the characters kind of mill around a little bit, so... We're going to bring up Kelgar's character sheet. We're going to double-click on him, bring up the portraits. And we're going to scroll down to where the dwarves are. As you can see, they have an extension, extensive collection of drow here. So if you're one for playing drow, you know, you'd have a lot to choose from. Okay, here are where the dwarves are. And I think this guy kind of looks like Kelgar. What do you think? You know, bald on top with a large beard. Ripped muscles. So we're going to choose that one. So that's Kelgar now. I mean, it doesn't change what it looks like on the outside here, but this is what you're going to see representing Kelgar over here, and then when you bring up his character sheet, this is his portrait. Now, if anybody knows where I can get one of these portraits that looks like Janik, let me know, and I will get it in. I will put it in as his picture. Yes. Okay. So let's bring up the inventory, and I completely forgot about this ring that we got from, what's his name, Brother Mering. He gave us this thing, but it's kind of useless, actually. It's a ring of crims crimson, excuse me, and all it does is emit red light, but since we're going to be a red wizard in our future, we might as well wear it. Give off a reddish glow. That way we won't have to use torches in the future. Well, and then I guess we'll replace it with stronger rings when we get hold of them. I can think of a ring of knock that we probably might buy. That way we won't have to repair that spell anymore. Alright, so... I finally put in these... bars over here for extra quick keys. So I'm going to put like the cure potions over there alchemist fire acid flask so I could just click here instead of pulling this up all the time healers kit I would do thieves tools but I'm not a thief so I really can't use that harvest cup that does heal twice per day let's see cure moderate wounds would be another one Tanglefoot bag. Just so I'll, I'll know that I'll have these available instead of having to pull this up and look through it. Yeah, and that should do it. Okay. Also, the crafting system now includes Storm of Zaheer and Mask of the Betrayer type crafting. Alright, let's go downstairs. Also, the death and dying system is now Storm of Zaheer, so if you go below negative 10, then you're dead. And the only way to come back is with a coin of life, I believe, or with a raise dead spell or a resurrection spell. Alright, so this is Jira and Zakan. Remember last episode I rescued Zakan? Jira said she was going to pay me for it, and then I was able to get some money from Zakan. Thank you again for what you have done. If you have a moment, my wife wishes to speak with you. Okay. Let's have a word. You've done it. Please, take this gold with our thanks. We will be forever grateful, and we get 150 XP for that. So we're going to try this. Surely you could spare more than 25 gold. But we failed. because we have a negative two modifier. Do not wish to seem ungrateful, but this is all I can afford. Thank you again, good sir. So we got 25 gold pieces. We'd best be moving on. I don't mind a fight, but I don't like bringing others into our battles. And they leave. All right. So there goes the rest of our buffs. So let's talk to this guy named Jorik, or Yorick. However you want to pronounce it. Looks like we were lucky to have you and your dwarf friend here. 
You'll always be welcome here at the Weeping Willow. Those who survived owe you their lives. There's a reward in this for me, I hope. A reward? Barely enough travelers for me to stay in business nowadays. And with the ones who died here, even fewer will want to visit. Come on, nobody died here. Relax. Let's try diplomacy. You would have been left with nothing if it weren't for me. And we succeeded. You have a point there. And I suppose there's no hurry to the repairs, seeing as how the attack chased off what few customers I had. So he gives us 50 gold. Here's what gold I could spare. Take it with my thanks. This is a fine establishment you have here. It certainly is. The name's Yorick. I knew him well. I rebuilt this place with my own two hands. I've got the only warm beds between West Harbor and Fort Locke. The only problem is... Oh, only problem is... The roads are too dangerous for travelers nowadays. Do you mind if I ask you some questions? Ask away. Can't say that I know much about the goings-on in the mirror. Do you know if this attack was related to the one at West Harbor? West Harbor? No, I didn't know about that. Why would anyone want to attack a swamp village? I was hoping you'd know. Sorry, but if this attack is related, I couldn't tell you how. West Harbor, something strange is definitely going on in the mirror. Why do you say that? Well, lizard folk and bandit attacks are common enough, but they both know better than to attack West Harbor. You harbor men have earned your reputation for being tough. Whoever or whatever is behind all this obviously isn't from around here. Everyone knows not to mess with that village. That's some other questions. Ask away. You've earned my time. You can't even guess at what the creatures were looking for. Can't help you there. You heard the same thing I did. Whatever this Kalak Cha is, I certainly don't have it. Alright, I have some other questions. Ask away. You've earned my time. Have you heard anything about what lies up ahead on the road? Aye, none of it good. The garrison at Fort Locke has stopped patrols along the road for some reason. They certainly picked a bad time to do so. A lot of attacks on travelers by lizard folk lately. And you know about strange attacks on my end. Why did the fort stop sending patrols? You'd have to ask them yourself. They just stopped showing up. Maybe the lizard folk have gotten so bad that they've got their hands full just holding their ground. I also hear there might be a new commander at the fort. If that's the case, he might not think patrolling the mare is important enough. Any idea where these lizard men are coming from? Your guess is as good as mine. They didn't used to be too common. Oh sure, you hear the occasional story about an ambush, but all in all, the lizard folk tended to keep to themselves. There have been plenty of sightings lately, though, and the lizards have gotten plenty aggressive. Something might be forcing them north, but I couldn't tell you what that was. Maybe they have a lair nearby. Possibly. Where it is, they always run off to the east after an attack. Maybe that's where they're holed up. But most folk have enough common sense not to go chasing after them if they've lived through an attack. Any other news that you've heard? Hmm. <laughs> Curious one, aren't you? Well, I did hear that the high road to Neverwinter is pretty much off limits now until the patrols are started up again. Something about bandits. I don't see why it's any different from the usual roadside thievery, but then again, I don't get out of the mare much. And the village of Highcliff is having some problems. Of course, they're on the coast, so there's always problems. What kind of problems? Pirates. Storms. Just being on the coast makes you a target for Luskins, if nothing else. Oh, and my frame rate has gone to crap again. I thought Luskin was far to the north. Must have heard about the recent war Luskin had with Neverwinter. And even I've heard about their new war with Ruithim. The Luskins are always looking for an excuse for a scrap, and they don't seem to care how far they have to go to find one either. Who's Ruth them? Some island. Probably pirates as well. I don't really care as long as they keep the Luskins busy. What can you tell me about the Luskin War of Neverwinter? 
Not much, to be honest, except that it ended in a stalemate. I hear Neverwinter and Luskin have emissaries with each other again. Though who knows how long that will last. Let's see who's Ruth him. I have some other questions. Why did you build an inn here in the swamp? I didn't actually build it. This building was already here. I just fixed it up. After poking around for a while, I learned that there used to be a village here. This building was the only one that survived. What happened to the village? Destroyed during the war against the King of Shadows. Big war, from what I understand, fought all across the mare. Lots of fighting up around Fort Locke as well. You can still find relics strewn about the area. Strewn around the area. Does Fort Locke still stand? Aye, it's still standing. That fort's managed to survive worse things than a war. You can find it north of here. The fort still guards the road between the mare and the northern lands. Though not as much as they used to with the troubles. You mentioned relics. Nothing to get excited about from what I hear. Mostly interesting to scholars, though they'd have a hard time getting to any of the relics. Why do you say that? Word is that the spirits from the battle still haunt the places where they fell. Now, I don't normally believe ghost stories, but this is the mirror. Anything can happen out here. Even dark dwarves attacking a small inn. I have some other questions. Ask away. What do you know about Neverwinter? I've heard the same stories everyone else has. The city is getting back on its feet after that business with the plague. The usual stories about what a great leader Lord Nasher is, along with other stories about nobility. Don't interest me much, to be honest. I visited the city a while back. Big place. Lots of things to waste your money on. Crowded. Noisy. I prefer the quiet of the mare. What's this about a plague? Something to do with a cult of false priests poisoning the city. It was taken care of, though, and that's all that matters. It's old news. I wasn't paying much attention even back then, and I've forgotten most of what I did know. Sorry. I have other questions. Ask away. Show me what you have for sale. So we've exhausted that entire dialogue tree. Okay. Yeah? So if we go to Kelgar, his armor's a chain shirt. Base armor class is 4, max dex is 4, so he's really not getting the most out of this armor because his dex bonus is a, is a 1. Now, if we go to a full plate, a full plate has a max dex bonus of 1, but base armor class of 8. So if we bought this for Kelgar, he would gain 4 points to his AC right now. So let's do that. I think that's a good investment. Okay, so his AC goes to 19. Let's sell this chain shirt. Don't need to be carrying it around. Get our 43 gold back. Now, we could give him a shield. If we give him a shield, his damage bonus... See how it's plus 6? That's because he's using two hands. He gets four from one hand, his dominant hand, and then he gets half of that from his not dominant hand to six. So if he uses a shield, this is going to drop down to four because he's not using his off hand. Now, I think if we give him a light shield, then he'll still keep his bonus. Yes. But it won't be as much armor class. And we did get this light shield from earlier. Yes. So I'm not going to waste my money on a shield. I'm just going to equip him with this and give him two more points of armor class to 21. And actually it does drop it down. But it does look like a buckler though. But it does drop it down to plus four. I thought it was going to stay at plus six. Yeah. Offhand weapon light shield plus one. There's actually a feat in regular D&D called shield bash where you can use this as like a two-handed weapon. Well, not two-handed weapon, like two-weapon fighting, I meant to say. So you can use this as your main attack, and then you can use your shield as your secondary weapon, although I think you lose the AC bonus for that one round that you're using it for attack. And it does bludgeoning damage, of course, because it's a bash. 
Okay. I mean, we could have probably sold a bunch of stuff and bought this tower shield plus one. How much would we get if we sold this? 351. So we could have definitely afforded this. This would have given Kelgar an additional five points to his armor class. But I think we should just save our money for right now. Now, when it comes to weapons, I think we're just going to stick with the Dwarven War Axe. I also got the mod where you can level up your companions into any level that you want. However, that could be problematic for Kelgar, considering that he has a special quest to become a monk, which would de-level him, and then you could level him, level him up as a monk. So I'm just going to keep him as a fighter. Maybe I'll give him some Dwarven Defender levels, too. You know? Round him out a little bit. I'll do some research on that later. But I don't think we're close to leveling up. We're not even halfway there yet. Okay, potion-wise, I think we're okay. Trinkets. Alright, so you can buy crafting items and a coin of life here. Coins of life are going to come in handy. You can also buy this enchanter's satchel. However, I don't think we need it right now. We don't have any crafting... We don't have any crafting skills that we've assigned. You can also buy these things like in Storm of Zaheer, these recipes. However, because I already started the game, I don't have the recipe book for these things to go into. That's okay, though, because we can just create these things with the regular original campaign crafting recipes. And I downloaded a, a PDF and printed it out right here, so I have... The full thing of recipes. I mean, you get these recipes from books that you find, but then you could also buy these things too. See, and you can actually buy a whole bunch of them here. Wow, I had no idea. I guess that would make coming back here kind of important, huh? That's if I started the game with all these mods in place. Then I would have started with one of those recipe books. You have need of me. That you get in the Storms of Here campaign. Yeah, as you can see, I don't have them now, so I think we'd be wasting our money buying those things. Okay, and that's what you would use the. Uh, Oh yeah, you just use that on the on the workbench. The Enchanter's Satchel, that's like for Mask of the Betrayer crafting. So I think I'll have my other magic users like Quora and Sand. Well now, I've had a good time so far. And the way you attract trouble... I haven't had this much fun since that tavern back at Bogan's Pass where I was using that trestle table as a battering ram. Oh, look, we're heading in the same direction and you seem to have more enemies than friends. What say we travel together? Might be able to teach each other a few things. Well, anyways, I forgot that we were heading out in a cutscene, but like I was saying, I was probably going to have Quora or Sand be my crafters, but... You know, since we're out here in a cutscene, I'm not keen on traveling with an insane dwarf. Insane? Ha! <laughs> Maybe one too many blows to the head, but I've toughened up since then. But let me prove it to you. So what do you say? Fine, have it your way. Just don't slow me down. And don't you worry about me keeping up. Kelgar Iron Fist carries his own weight. I won't be slowing you down. Okay. As, he, as you can see here, we have uh, a timer, just like in Storm of here. So, this is how we're going to keep time. So, we're going to rest and regain our spells. 
See how it says you slept eight hours and are fully rested. So, it now it's the middle of the day. The hour is 15, which would make it 3 o'clock. And Kythorn 6, I guess that's a month. Or Kythorn is the month, 6 is the day. And the year is 1372 in Dale Reckoning. The year of wild magic. Okay, so we're going to see how much time is going to elapse. And if you try to rest again, I don't think it'll let you. Oh yeah, it will now, because I installed another mod where you can rest again. Okay, so now hour zero, so it's basically 12 o'clock, midnight. But if I didn't install that mod, it would say that it would take an additional eight hours before you can rest again, which kind of makes it a little more difficult. But when you rest, it doesn't have that, you know, pop-up screen that says it's a safe place to rest or not. And, you know, if it's not, then you get a random encounter. Or if you're playing Icewind Dale, then it could say it's safe and then you'll have a random encounter anyway. So as you can see here, now we have two locations additional that we can go to. We can go to Fort Lock or we can go to something called the Swamp Cave. Now, I always thought the Swamp Cave was the Swamp Ruins when I first started playing this, but it's not. It's an, an optional area. You actually can't go to the Swamp Ruins unless you go to West Harbor, I believe. And even then, I think it's... I don't think they let you. So, let's go to the Swamp Cave first. It's a nice little detour that we're going to make. All right, so as you can see, here's Galen with his merchant guards fighting a bunch of lizard folk. So let's bring up the quick cast, and I think I'm going to just put all those guys to sleep over there. Why not? Let's center it on him. He means Dacia. Okay, Kelgar. Coup de gras, these guys. It was a mistake to challenge me. Press the attack, quickly! You go take care of him. Get some coup de gras. All right. All right! And you could just attack him, I think. You got the coup de gras, but... This one's still up, huh? Come on, another coup de gras. There we go. So we got the XP on all those. Where are you going? Let's get them. We got more enemies. However, let's not be so hasty about that. This has been by far the most difficult trip I've ever had through the mare. It's a good thing I pay my guards well. It's the mare. Lizard folk attacks are to be expected. Of course they are. That's why I've paid for guards on this trip. Still, I've never encountered so many of them in this part of the swamp. A clan must have settled here recently. This is more than what we've signed up for, Galen. First those creatures at the end, and then these lizards. You told us the only danger was bandits. Are you scared? We had it under control, Welp. Don't get full of yourself. Your gut's going to be full of my fist. You keep talking like that. That's so. Go on, dwarf. Try it. We could settle this right now if you're eager to die. And we get a point influence with Kelgar. That's what I want to hear. Time to teach these cell swords a lesson. No! I've paid well for the services of these mercenaries, and I will not have them harmed because of some childish name-calling. Safe travels to you, friend. I hope we meet again in safer environs. Alright. So we get a gem, seven gold pieces out of it, and we get another eight gold pieces. You know, since we're here, we might as well talk to Kelgar, before we engage in more battles. 
Something you need? Yeah. B by the way, who are you? Kelgar Iron Fist, of course. It's a wonder you haven't heard of me, considering how I've made my mark up and down the Sword Coast for almost a year. Never mind, I've had other questions for you. Or I had other questions. Alright, go on and ask them. Why were those men trying to attack you outside the Weeping Willow? They were in the mood to threaten, but not fully in the mood to start a fight. I think they were expecting me to drop the coin and leave quickly, which just goes to show you they don't know me too well. It's a shame they didn't keep it a friendly fight. Some people have no stomach for using their fists when they have a weapon at hand. Why are you so eager to fight? Eager to fight? Well, I suppose I am, if you can call it that. I mean, it's all in good fun. Some take pride in craftsmanship, or in hunting, or in haggling for the best price on a blade or other piece of steel. Me? Talking with my fists is my art form. Every tavern's an opportunity, I say. There's usually someone who could take a few punches to the gut and crime before they start weeping like a child. But why do you do that? Well, I don't know. I enjoy it, I guess. It's a mark of pride to be able to stand tall and take every punch, then give it right back until I'm the only one standing. Is that usually how it turns out? Most of the time. Only beaten really bad once. But I learned from it, and I'm determined not to let it happen again. Thing is, I'm glad it happened. It was my destiny. What happened? Well, you see, I used to win. Almost undefeated. But there was this time in a tavern far from here that I chose a fight that ended up choosing me. It was fate, I tell you. You found fate in a tavern brawl. Well, it wasn't much of a fight. You see, there were these skinny-robed humans, barely twigs, that were sitting at the bar when one of our competitions broke out. There were chairs getting smashed, people screaming, tankards being used as clubs. Ah, glorious. I don't understand the problem. Well, everyone was having a good time when I noticed those skinny humans were just sitting there, not even having the decency to pay attention. Just nursing waters. Waters! So I asked them, well, shouted really, what in the hell they thought they were doing? Ignoring the fine entertainment and then insulting the establishment by not having ale? He shouted at them. And maybe I shoved one of them a bit. Or tried to break a chair over their skulls since they were making a point of pretending they didn't hear me. Rude, I tell you. Were they wizards? Well, no, not exactly. I didn't see them cast any spells exactly, uh, because I couldn't see straight over the next few heartbeats. What happened? Ah, well, they used me as a bar rag first, and not a single punch I threw even hit them. Oh, they were moving too fast, and plus, I, I think I was seeing double or triple. Ugh, after they smashed my face into the bar a few times, uh, they showed me the floor up close. <laughs> the floor was pretty dirty by that point, by the way. Then, as the final blow, they sent me flying like a drunk hippogriff out the window. <sighs> Magical it was. So, after I woke up and wiped the blood out of my eyes, and finally found all my teeth, I went back in and thanked them. Best beating I've ever received. They seemed a little taken aback by my friendliness. And it turns out they were part of some order. Son something or other, and, and get this. They devoted their lives to fighting with their fists. Can you imagine? Lifetime devotion to brawling. It's their lives, their craft. So they were monks. They're monks, eh? Crazy water-drinking fools. <laughs> Hope drinking water isn't what makes them fight like that. Anyway, that life sounded like destiny to me. I mean, those skinny excuses for humans were good. And then they spent their whole lives kicking the hell out of others, training for it. That's when I knew that's what I wanted to do with my life. My purpose was clear. 
I don't think kicking the hells out of others is the point of a monastic order. Huh? Of course it is. Well, as far as I could tell once my head stopped ringing. It's more of a state of mind and body. You mean like headbutting someone? I already know how to do that, though sometimes I need to grab them by the beard or collar and yank their head down so I could hit it properly. It's not about violence, Kelgar. Oh, is that so? Well, I must have missed that part while they were wiping down the tavern with my face and throwing me through a window. <laughs> Shows how much you know about it. You didn't see them in action. Never mind, I had other questions for you. All right, go on and ask them. Okay. So I think we asked this one, so let's go to three. I need to know more about you if you're going to travel with me. Well, there's a great deal to tell, especially if we're going with clan history and our accomplishments. But chances are, and I don't blame you, you're just asking about me personally. So let me give you the short version. I've been traveling the Sword Coast for a year or two, making my trade at villages and towns. And, well, making my trade at taverns as well, but you already had a taste of that at the Weeping Willow. Why were those men trying to attack you outside the Weeping Willow? I think we already asked that. Okay, more questions. All right, go on and ask them. Why are you going to Neverwinter? Well, I hear there's an altar them tall, robed skinnies who have opened their doors to anyone who wants to learn how to smash skulls. And I plan on taking them up on their generous offer. It won't be the same as a tavern brawl to be fighting inside a different type of building. But I figure I can make the change as long as there are things to break and windows to throw people out of. Okay, more questions. All right, go on and ask them. Do you know anything about the creatures pursuing us? No, they're strange ones to be sure with all their hissing and spitting. Uh, they also don't seem to be ones for a stand-up brawl, always relying on ambushes and sneaking up. If they have a problem with you, I say they get all their clan together and face us at once, without all this chipping away at our patience. Of course, they know we'd probably send them running back to their mothers, <laughs> so chances are they're just trying to make us angry. More questions. All right, go on and ask them. Have you heard the word Kalak Cha before? It's no proper dwarf curse, that's for sure. Sounds like something they want to find pretty badly, though, whatever it is. Okay, more questions. All right, go on and ask them. <laughs> I have need of your items, give them to me. I cannot travel quickly carrying all this. Wow, that's a new one. Yeah, let's give all these back. I guess we'll give you the scimitar. Too. Yeah. There we go. That's more. You like have need it. of me. I don't think there's anything else that we should give to him. I probably should have bought a bow for him. Crap. Well, I guess we can always find one. Okay. In Follow fact, me. You know what? We're gonna put your. Weapons there. You have need of me? So let's zoom out. Let's check out the map. Okay, so we're right here. There's the exit, which is over here. And there's stuff over here that we can explore. Now we are running up on time a little bit, so we're probably not going to get through this whole area, but let's get through as much as we can. Let's turn AI mode back on. Hmm.
Well, I want to grease one of these guys up, but first thing we should probably do is put on the And we'll go back to the crossbow. Yes. You come up here and block. You have need of me? Well, we... I guess we'll grease them. Okay. There they come. Ah, uh, looks like we have company. Okay, you can do, I guess, a knockdown on that one. I will do what I can. Uh, just shoot him. Uh-oh, we're running low on ammo. You're not attacking him. At least they're falling down. I will do what I can. Okay, now would be a good time to... I guess do burning hands on these guys. Oh, I missed. I didn't expect him to turn around like that. That sucks. Actually, let's do mini. Although, we'll probably only do one. Hey, killed one. Alright, let's shoot. Oop. Oh. Now we have to go back to our club again. Uh-oh, we got a shaman here, don't we? Ow. All right, he's knocked down. Six gold pieces. And we got crates. What do you yeah. have? Go that way. You have need of me? Holy water and 64 gold pieces. Oh, 432 gold pieces. That's treasure. And we have a locked chest over there. Good thing we have knock. Too bad I don't have like a fireball spell. I wonder if we can scare him. Uh oh. Did I scare myself? I did. Kelgar. Ha! To battle! Knock him down. So he's gonna be running away. Take that! Alright. He's almost dead. Thanks, ha! Cleave. Oh, missed. Take that! All right, he's dead. This guy's still scared, so he won't attack. Oh, yeah! we're off. On your guard. Foes approach. All right. Go back to your bow and shoot him. Five gold pieces. Oh, and it's trapped. Well, there's not much that we can do about that. Should be unlocked now. Let's get him. Ah, uh, ten damage. That's kind of a lot for this level. However, we do have a healer's kit, 68 gold pieces, and thieves' tools. We would need a rogue to help us with traps. Where are we going to get a rogue? You have need of me? Not sure, but we might have to go through this whole area rogueless. 
Okay, so we do have more of this area to go through, but we're really running up on time. We'll just have to tackle it in the next episode. So what are we going to find in this Swamp Cave? Find out next time. This is Big Lowe signing off. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, man. Tango Bindia.